because I think that we are all a lot stronger than we give ourselves credit for and the mind can push the body to do things that maybe you didn't think it was capable of. Okay, that time was the closest time I came to falling on my face. And this is exactly how our bodies are designed to become stronger and to adapt, is in these short but intense circumstances. Hey guys, welcome back to another challenge video. I'm on a roll with these things. This is like number four or five of these challenge things. They're super fun and it allows me at the end to do a deep dive into the science behind this kind of stuff. So whether you're doing it for a challenge video or a challenge like this, or if you just wanna add it into your routine, then you can know some of the benefits to the practice. So for today's video, we're going to be doing Wim Hof breathing, which is something that I've done for quite a long time. I mean, on and off about two years. So uh, I'll link to Wim Hof's profile or his channel down below, but the protocol that I'm going to be following for this challenge will be as follows. Three rounds of the Wim Hof breathing, which entails 30 deep inhales and exhales, followed by um, half exhale at the, on the final breath and as long of a hold as I can manage. Now, Wim says that this should be done for three to four rounds, and then you can go on with the rest of your day or ideally follow it with cold exposure. However, <laughs> for this video, I'm gonna combine it with push-ups. So I'll do the three rounds, as I just mentioned, and then for the third round, on the final breath, I will hold the breath, roll over, and pump out as many push-ups as I can. This is my spin on Wim Hof's breathing. This is not at all <laughs> like, what he advocates. It's just something that I have found is really helpful um, for progressing my push-ups and it's nice to see how far I can go while my breath is held, like how far I can push myself physically with all the oxygen already running through my body from the previous two rounds. So this is something that I'm going to do. You're welcome to try it, of course. Um, I would recommend warming up your wrists and your shoulders beforehand just so that you're not doing it first thing um, on the wrist if you're going to be doing the push-ups. can also do. I've also done this with jump squats after, just to like to see how many repetitions you can get through while your breath is held. It's a fun challenge. Hmm, 27 for day one. I'm going to try, I'm gonna to try to get more throughout the challenge. But it's a super mental game when you're holding your breath, how far you can push yourself. And it's, it, there's nothing quite like it. So I really enjoy this practice. And the worst case is like I fall on my face and I need to breathe. But there's that fine line of finding where your, your absolute discomfort is because it's not painful, it's just very, very uncomfortable when you need to breathe. So that's it for day one. I'll see you babes back at the end of the challenge for do a little debrief. In the meantime, please enjoy the two weeks of Wim Hof breathing. You know, I just have to say one thing that's really great about this when you're holding your breath and trying to get as many push-ups as you can, I do this mental mind thing where I say, okay, just do three more. And then I do the three more and I still can have two more. <laughs> it just keeps going until I, until I collapse. And I do that same thing in the workouts, in my workouts. And I think it's a very powerful, it's kind of like, you're intentionally <laughs> deceiving yourself, but in this case it works. So that's one thing I can encourage you all to try if you're also uh, participating in this challenge or if you see this video and then it makes you want to do it, is try that out. Just give yourself a few more reps, see if you can do it, and then add on each time because I think that we are all a lot stronger than we give ourselves credit for and the mind 
can push the body to do things that maybe you didn't think it was capable of. that time was the closest time I came to falling on my face. In my mind I said do 16 and then I pushed myself to go to 27 and I really almost collapsed on those last two. But I did it. of the challenge and as promised in the introduction I wanted to go over some of the benefits to this kind of breathing as well as some of the processes in general that happen within our body when we breathe and how different kinds of breath manipulation can affect the body differently. So starting on a broad macro level and then working our way down into some of the specifics of how Wim Hof's breathing can influence the body. Our inhales and exhales are tied to our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, respectively, which both make up part of the autonomic nervous system. And it's really important that we keep these two systems balanced so that we're not always in a state of stress or conversely always too relaxed. So for my fellow yoga practitioners watching, there is a pranayama, also known as breathing technique, called samavriti, which is just equal parts inhale and exhale. So you can practice this now, inhaling for a count of four, five, or six seconds, and exhaling for the same amount of time. This is, as I said, a really good way to maintain that precious homeostasis. Um, and unfortunately, nowadays, most people tend to isolate their breathing to just their chest, which can prompt a stressful response from the system and lead you more into the fight or flight response. So it's even more important that we balance that with some parasympathetic activities so that homeostasis is maintained. So how does this connect back to the challenge, back to Wim Hof's style of breathing? Well, as I mentioned in the introduction, his prescription is 30 deep inhales and exhales, followed by a breath retention. Now, this style of breathing is very stressful, it's not relaxed, and it's forced. And these 30 deep inhales and exhales cause the blood pH to increase to become more alkaline, which means that the breath hold at the end is actually easier because our CO2 levels are decreased, meaning that you can hold your breath a lot longer than you normally would. Because it's the carbon dioxide in our body, when the carbon dioxide levels increase and the blood becomes more basic, uh, that forces you to have that urge to breathe. So this is a really nice way to test or to train yourself to be able to hold your breath longer because you're giving your body all the tools that it needs to be able to do so by increasing the pH levels of the blood. So breaking that down a little bit, as I mentioned, there's a really delicate balance at play between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And you can think of the same type of balance being present between oxygen and carbon dioxide within the body when we breathe. Now, if this all sounds like 
way too scientific and really nerdy for you, I'll go ahead and leave the papers down below that I did, that I read to research for this video if you want to go into more depth, but just taking a little superficial look at it, when we breathe in, when we inhale, oxygen goes from the outside into our lungs and then is transported into the blood. Now, in order for it to be released from the blood into the cells to be converted into energy, it needs carbon dioxide as a catalyst for that release. So when we inhale and then hold the breath, if we're not moving or if our carbon dioxide levels are decreased, you don't have that catalyst present to be able to release the oxygen from the blood into the cells for use. Which is nice because if you're not doing anything as Wim advocates, if you're just doing this laying down, then you don't really need the energy in the cells to move and you can hold the breath for a lot longer than you would in other circumstances without having done the 30 breaths beforehand. Okay, so you may be thinking, cool, thanks for the little mini biology lesson, Ali, that's great. Now, why would I care to even do this? Like, why would anyone subject themselves to doing this kind of challenge on a regular basis? Well, dear friend, I'm so glad that you asked because there are four main benefits that I like to highlight. The first is that breath retention of any kind, whether it's preceded by 30 deep breaths, as Wim Hof advocates, or just holding your breath normally, is tied to an increase in the hormone HDH, which is known as human growth hormone, which is a polypeptide, fancy way of saying a chain of amino acids, which is essential, necessary for muscle growth and repair after resistance training. So any of my fellow gym rats out there or people who just enjoy doing sport, this is really important because human growth hormone is essential for making your gains stick, for making progress in whatever physical pursuit you choose to, to follow. Now, my two week challenge included max push-ups at the end of the third round of breath retention. And this is not what Wim suggests, this is just my little quirky spin on, on his breathing technique. But after doing some of the research and going into finding out the benefits of breath retention and how it's linked to increase in HDH, this seems like a one-two punch for muscle growth. Not only are you getting the benefits of holding your breath, but you're also um, doing something that's physical and that's difficult while your breath is held. So that's awesome. I had no idea that this was going to be a side effect, but I'm really happy that it is. So if any of you also out there are looking to increase your levels of HDH or look for another physical challenge, then this has kind of a twofold benefit. So very cool. You're welcome. <laughs> Benefit numero dos is that this practice can increase your awareness of your breath and is seen as a type of meditation. So as I mentioned earlier, unfortunately many of us now concentrate our breathing to our chest, which is a very shallow and superficial type of breathing, which can have many negative effects on the body. And this kind of practice forces you to take a step back and only focus on your breathing, which many of us don't do nowadays, but all of us can benefit from. So it's a nice way to, one, start your day off if you're doing it first thing in the morning and to reset some of those potentially bad habits that you may have built over time of breathing just into the chest. Benefit number three is that this practice preps the body for the cold exposure that Wim Hof advocates. Now I didn't mention anything about the cold exposure in this video, this was specifically the breathing technique, but I do have other videos here on the channel related to cold exposure that I'll link to in the description box below if you want to go ahead and check those out. I go into the benefits of, of that in those videos. Um, but because cold exposure requires an extreme amount of concentration, you really can't be thinking about anything else because all systems are a go, your whole body is consumed by the discomfort that the cold brings. This is a really nice way to prep your body to be ready for that kind of state of extreme concentration. And benefit number four, the final benefit in today's video is that this practice makes the body stronger by exposing it to intense but short bouts of extreme stress. And this is exactly how our bodies are designed to become stronger and to adapt, is in these short but intense circumstances. So you can think of this in terms of the breathing, that by doing this practice every day, you're increasing your tolerance to hold your breath, you're increasing your human growth hormone, or alternatively, in the cold exposure, that by voluntarily seeking cold and seeking discomfort, you're increasing your tolerance for cold in other parts, so you're not going to be as sensitive to it. This is also seen in exercise, that exercise is a stress placed on the body, but everybody knows that it is good for you in the long haul. So you have to suffer in the short term to be able to reap the benefits later on. 
Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really enjoy putting these challenge videos together and I announced this one on Instagram actually before I started doing it and got feedback that many of you decided to follow along, which is super cool. I think I'm gonna start doing that more often because I find it much more enjoyable when it's a community uh, doing these kinds of things together, getting stronger and learning more about ourselves together. So if you happen to join in the challenge, just leave a comment down below how you found it and if you're going to keep with it or if you know two weeks was enough for you. And if you didn't and you're watching this video now, then I encourage you to try this out for a few days and see what benefits it gives you. I'd be really curious um, because I think that you would be surprised at just how much you can, can tolerate. <laughs> And with that, wishing you a great rest of your day. Make sure that you have some time today to breathe deep and just center and take time for yourself. And I'll see you back here in my next video. Take care, guys. Ciao.